Good morning, church. It is Friday morning for our 9 a.m. devotion, and we are so glad that you are joining us uh, before this weekend to get our Friday started. And so, thank God it's Friday. I think uh, a lot of us look forward to Friday and look forward to the weekend. And in central Wisconsin, beautiful weather we've had uh, this week and this weekend. And so, an opportunity for us to uh, be able to be outside and to uh, take part in God's beautiful uh, creation. And yesterday we uh, looked at Acts chapter uh, 12 and we talked about Peter being rescued and the church was earnestly praying for his rescue but they were not expecting it to happen and they were surprised that God answered their prayer. And this week we've been focused on refocusing on the future and for us as Christians, it's important that we have things to look forward to. And one of the things that we look forward to is Jesus' return. And as we await His return, we know that there's kingdom work to do. And so they were hoping for something to happen in the future, praying for it, but were surprised when it happened. And so then Peter was freed by an angel, and then he went to Mary, the mother of John Mark's house, and he knocks there at the gate, and we heard about a servant girl, named Rhoda, who came out and was so excited to see Peter, she doesn't let him in. She just went back and told the guys. And then the guys were like, no, it must be a ghost or, or an angel or a spirit that looks like Peter, but it can't really be him. And Peter just keeps knocking. And then she brings them to see for themselves, and they see that. And Peter then motioned to them and told them, let the brothers know that I'm alive. And then in verse 17, it says, he went to another place. And as he went to another place, he was out on the run because Rome and the Jewish leaders are trying to persecute Peter. And as we found out yesterday, because they had already persecuted James, the brother of John. And so for this morning, we're going to follow up on this, going to 1 Peter chapter 4. And so in your Bible, turn to 1 Peter chapter 4. And we're going to start at verse 7 for our devotion today. If you have the YouVersion Bible app, you can go ahead and start punching in 1 Peter chapter 4. I'll be using the ESV study translation of the Bible. And this is a great time to hit the share button while everybody's turning to the page of 1 Peter chapter 4 so that we can share this with our friends, family members, and community as we spend this time together as the Lord's Church in his word. So 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 7 says, The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. And so Peter is writing to the church that is scattered, that is being persecuted. And so he says, be sober-minded and be self-controlled. And so in the midst of persecution and suffering, don't turn to substances to try to numb us or to cloud our minds, our thoughts, or our feelings, and stay controlled. Don't get angry. Don't let your behavior uh, turn into something that it shouldn't or make cho choices that you shouldn't just because persecution's happening and that persecution's going to happen until Jesus returns. And so that is what Peter is saying here as you continue to pray and do the work of the Lord. But as we await Jesus' return and the end being near, and we know that every generation is living in the end times until the Lord appears. And so we are to do the work of the Lord. And Peter knows as he is being persecuted and that they are trying to kill him, he knows two things are going to happen. Either before he dies, Jesus was going to come back, or it will be his time to die for the Lord. And so whether he dies or the Lord comes back, he knows he has kingdom work to do. And the same holds true for us, that until Jesus comes back, we have work to do, knowing that two things are going to happen. Either one day God's going to call us home, or before he calls us home, Jesus will return. But look at what he's telling the church to be about as they are waiting. Maybe you've heard those words, uh, while you are there or while you're out, can you pick up this or can you do this? And so at our house, I do a lot of the running of the errands and it's 
typical to be at the store or out running some errands and get a text from my wife or the kids, hey dad, while you're out and about, can you pick up this? Or can you grab this or do this? A lot of times it can be the milk or the bread or the eggs while you're at the store. Can you pick this up? And so while they are waiting, they're asking you to pick up something for them. And that's what Peter's talking about here. While we're waiting for Jesus to either call us home or to return, there's kingdom work for us to do. And so here he goes to tell us what to be about. Verse 8 he says, In the midst of this persecution suffering, he says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. So sin divides, love unifies. And he tells the church, even though you're undergoing persecution and suffering, love earnestly, and that love covers the multitude of sins. And so we as Christians are to be known by our love and a response of love because of how Christ first loved us. And so while persecution and suffering happens, it's going to be the opposite of anger. It's going to be the opposite of hostility. We're going to continue to love Jesus and love others and to be the church and that that's a witness. And that's what the early church during persecution is doing. Verse 9. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. And so be hospitable. Help people in need. Serve people that God puts in your path, that he's brought you into relationship with. And as you show that hospitality, do it without grumbling and complaining. That it is an honor, a joy, and a privilege to serve the Lord by serving other people. And so we are to be a loving church, and a church that practices hospitality without grumbling and complaining. Verse 10, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. And so God has given us these gifts that we don't deserve. That's grace. God's love and God giving us things, even when we don't deserve it, just because that's who He is and that's His heart. And it says that he has gifted every one of us as followers of Jesus Christ with different gifts based on God's grace. But to use those gifts as you are loving and you are serving the Lord by loving and serving one another. Verse 11, whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, being the mouthpieces of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And so as we are the church, our witness is one of love, of hospitality, one of using our gifts, of serving others and showing God's grace to us, that this is God doing the work, not us, and it's all because of His grace. And then the other marker there, while we're doing that, is, is that we are the mouthpiece of God. We are to tell people about Jesus and what difference he has made in our life so that in order everything gives glory to Jesus so we are mirrors we deflect and reflect the light that God has shown on us to point people to Jesus that's why in the midst of persecution and suffering Peter is saying church be on witness be a witness of love hospitality using your gifts serving one another and when people give you the credit for it nope you tell them, I'm just doing this because of what Jesus Christ has done for me on the cross. And as a follower of Jesus Christ, it is a wonderful responsibility, honor, joy, and privilege to point people to Him because He's the one who's changed our lives. He's the one who's made an eternal difference in our lives because He first loved us and went to a cross to die for us, to do for us what we can't do for ourselves. And so we're glorifying Jesus Christ when we're loving, when we're witnessing, when we're being hospitable, when we're using those gifts to serve. And I love how he concludes here. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And so uh, Bach, a great music composer who was a Lutheran, and he would read his Bible when he was out in the outhouse. And so that's where they found his Bible, and it was worn and it was used and he would be reading the Word of God while sitting on the throne. 
and he would always sign every musical piece that he composed, S-D-G, Soleo de Gloria, to God be the glory, that he realized this gift to write and to compose music was not a gift that came from himself, but was a gift that came from the Lord to glorify the Lord in everything that he was able to accomplish in life. And that same holds true for us, church, that we go out today to glorify God, to bring glory to Him, and to Him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Yes, so shall it be. And we do that by loving, by showing hospitality, and using our gifts to serve the Lord. And so today we are halfway through our 40 days of random acts of hope, as we as a church are unleashing hope in our marriages and our families our relationships, our communities, our schools, and our workplaces. And today, on day 20, it says, send a thank you message to your doctor, nurse, dentist, or health professional who has provided care for you. And so if somebody's provided care for you, a medical worker, please send them a thank you. Or if they just serve you and have been serving you for this year or for many years, let them know the blessing that God has placed them in your life using their gifts to serve you. And during this pandemic, it's a great time also just to thank frontline healthcare workers who are making great sacrifices, wearing masks under a plexi glass shield and doing that for hours and putting themselves at risk by using their gifts to serve God and to serve people in this time of great need. And so thank a healthcare worker uh, today, church. We bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful that in the midst of difficult times, in the midst of persecution and suffering, your church responded in a way that the world never expected. And Peter calls us to do that, to show love, to be self-controlled, to be sober-minded, and to show hospitality to those you put in our path. And Lord, that we are blessed by having the opportunity to use the gifts you've given to us to serve you by serving others. And so, Lord, as we go out to serve today, help us to remember and to realize that we do this not to feel good about ourselves, but to bring honor and glory to you. To you be all the glory and honor, because you're the one who created us, you're the <coughs> one who died for us and redeemed us, and you're the one who first loved us and gives us this opportunity to live life with you now and forever. And so, to you be the glory. Lord, we pray for our health care frontline workers, and we pray that your church today would unleash hope to them by giving them a thank you, a compliment, or an encouragement as they continue to use their gifts to serve our community, especially in this time of need. Lord, bless your church today as we unleash hope, and we bring the hope of the world, you, to the people that you bring in our path. And all God's people said, Amen. Church, have a blessed Friday and have a blessed weekend. In Jesus' name, amen.